Hello bros, welcome to a Diablo 4 video. This video, its primary focus is to help answer on stream when I get asked what this build is. So if you're here from the stream, hey, thank you for taking an interest in the build. If you're not from stream, well then come join me on stream. Uh, but uh, on stream, I get asked quite often what my build is uh, because people want to try and copy it. Um, I don't know if this has been done already by other people. This is just how I've done the build and how I've evolved it. I'm sure I'll probably evolve it a little bit more over time. I've just kind of naturally found items and started off with Art Glash actually early on and have never let go of it um, as I'm scared of change. And I have no change for this guy uh, that's begging next to me. Uh, so we'll move away from him. Um, <laughs> um, so we'll go through everything, what's basically mandatory. Um, I am playing Hardcore. Uh, I haven't died, Touchwood, um, using this build. Um, there are some things in this build which are a little bit more protective, um, but you can definitely change some stuff up yourself. So we're going to go through skills, uh, then through items, and then I'm going to show you how the build actually works. So... Starting with the skills, um, it's an Art Clash build. Uh, basically this build uses no mana uh, and we play it like melee. So it's a very weird build, we're a melee sork. Trust me, it works. Okay. So Art Clash obviously fully ranked and then we're going to go down into stun. So every time uh, we attack something with our Art Clash for a target that's stunned, it's going to reduce our cooldowns by 0 0.15 seconds. You may have noticed down at the bottom we have defensive cooldowns for a 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we have our unstable currents as the ultimate on my right click. So this is the only actual damaging ability that I'm using. But my actually my cooldowns are doing damage. So I'll explain more soon. Um, just taking some defensive stuff here. If you're playing normal you don't necessarily need to take uh, all of this kind of stuff. It's just this is my... All the defensive stuff you see, it's up to you if you're playing hardcore or not. Uh, you can definitely shift more points around into like lucky hit nodes uh, in order to get more procs off essentially of other things. But here is mandatory that you max your teleport to reduce its cooldown. Also the damage actually ends up adding up quite nice. And then you've got your frost nova. It's going to amplify your damage a lot by putting the vulnerability debuff on the enemy and that makes them take 20% increased damage and you will notice that damage. Trust me. Um, we also got something here kind of mandatory as well, using a cooldown grants 30% of your maximum life. Um, you'll be using cooldowns all the time, you'll be going to be having barriers all the time. Another mandatory node here is shocking impact, every time you stun an enemy you deal damage. You'll be stunning a lot of enemies a lot of the time, your cooldowns will do damage. Um, so because of the skill assignment, we'll go back to that skill tree in a second. But mainly because of this Art Clash enchantment, when you use a cooldown, enemies around you are stunned for 0.7 seconds. So every time we use a cooldown, it stuns, and then they, because they're stunned, they then take that damage that I just showed you on that skill tree. Uh, the other enchantment I've got is Flame Shield. That is because um, if I take fatal damage, I survive for two seconds, basically. It gives me two seconds to get the hell out of there. Uh, and um, teleport away or whatever so that's my like oh crap button um, I think you could probably do something like um, lightning ball where critical strikes have a 25% chance to spawn a static ball lightning this build has a lot of crit so this these balls will be pretty much everywhere so if I was doing like uh, normal I would probably use ball lightning going back into the tree so we move down into ultimate, we take unstable currents, and we take everything on the right hand side here. You can put more points in conduction if you wish to. Uh, movement speed with the items I already got aren't a massive uh, issue, but um, the other things here are pretty much mandatory. Hitting enemies with shock skills increases your crit strike chance by 3% and resets upon getting a crit strike. So that just makes sure that you pretty much have crits happening very, very often. Uh, enemies deal 15% less damage for uh, for 5 seconds after being critically struck, so that's pretty important for my hardcore in particular. Once again, you don't necessarily have to take this if you're a normal, um, but you're going to want this last one as well, where it shock skills have a 9% chance to stun enemies 
for three seconds off of a lucky hit. And then finally you got this mastery where that you do more damage if you're close and they do less damage to you. It's pretty simple. We're going to be in melee range pretty much all the time. Um, going into the items now. So there is an item I... I have done this build before throughout my entire leveling process, but this build really took it up from like good to okay, this is broken with this chess piece. So I was lucky to receive this item quite early on after entering world tier three. You won't see this before world tier three because it's a unique item. Um, basically, after using teleport, close enemies are pulled to you and stunned for 2.4 seconds. But teleport's cooldown is increased by 20%. So we're going to offset the teleport by A, putting points in. So we're bringing the cooldown lower anyway. But B, also cooldown reduction is very, very important. So there are three ways you can get cooldown reduction. That is on Helm. Um, that is from your offhand. And I believe on Necklace. There are two ways on Necklace I think you can get that. So cooldown reduction is super, super important. Uh, there might be some other unique pieces that give you cooldown reduction, but these are the main ones. Um, so in our helmet, for example, here, um, basic, basically, in terms of stats, you're looking for close range, like damage reduction, attack damage when you're close, but anything to do with basic skill speed, cooldown reduction, um, Damage to enemies when they're crowd controlled or stunned or fro frozen or like basically any like CC damage increase is really really good. But the most important ones are basic skill attack speed um, and cooldown reduction are like the two most important ones. There's another really really important one on the necklace which is plus three defensive all stats. That's going to bring more defensive things down lower as well. So. Those are the really important things in, in the build to take take note of. And this chess piece. <laughs> if you're going to get this chess piece early on, you're banging. But you can see here that this this helmet isn't perfect. You've got attack speed on basic. We've got cooldown reduction. I've got that imprint because I'm on hardcore to give me some more defensive properties. But you could probably run something else more aggressive for sure. Uh, my gloves are far from perfect. Um... Crit strike chance is great. Uh, you want crit strike chance, crit damage as well will work really well with the lightning because you want to focus on those crits and the crits damage for the, for the interactions with those skill points. Um, gloves generally have core uh, plus ranks. So in this case, for example, chain lightning plus three, completely useless. I used to run chain lightning um, until I augmented this build even further to bring it to a new height. Uh, but yeah, I these gloves are okay. Crit chance, attack speed, intellect. Ideally, I would get like crit damage as the fourth one or something along those lines. Uh, legs. These legs are pretty nice uh, in terms of defensive properties. It's got perfect on the uh, imprint there at the bottom. Uh, 0.5 increased armor for four seconds up to the cap of 50%, which is pretty nice. Uh, also, we've got dodge chance against close enemies, 10% um, that dodge chance is like whatever. Uh, damage increase after killing an elite is pretty nice. Uh, damage reduction is just nice. Once again, you can get kind of whatever you want for these. It's just like close range stuff is the most important, really. General damage reduction. Um, yeah, you're starting to see the gist of it. The boots here are insane. These boots will get nerfed 100%. So the good thing about these boots is that the stats on them aren't looking like the craziest until you read the thing at the bottom, which only these boots have, which is increases your your crit strike your crit strike chance is increased by 18%. Well, in my case, 18% of your bonus movement speed. It is bonkers. So right now I'm getting around about you can't see it. It's not calculated in the stats until you leave town. Um, but basically it's around 7.2%-ish right now, base, and that's not me using other things in order to give me more movement speed. Like for example here, evading gives me 75% movement speed. When I use my teleport or whatever, I will get um, movement speed from like this imprint here, for example, which is while well, unstoppable for four seconds after you gain movement speed. 
uh, and you can move freely through enemies, which is pretty nice for hardcore. It allows me to go through enemies if I get kind of stuck. Uh, but yeah, teleporting is an unstoppable move, so you'll get movement speed after you teleport. Um, after When you use Flame Shield, you'll then get movement speed. So this is a really nice amp synergy with the crit as well. Also, in terms of the necklace, you can see you've got the plus three ranks there on all defensive. That is very, very important that you somehow get that. It's pretty rare, um, but you'll be keeping that item probably for a really long time if you're able to get it. Uh, damage reduction from close range as well is super good on neck here as well. Uh, the extra movement speed here is just an added perk. It's just extra niceness. And then we've got 10% uh, damage. But you can kind of see the gist of like that. But the most important thing there is... Uh, plus three ranks of all defenses. If you can get cooldown reduction on this as well, that would be amazing. Uh, and also damage reductions from close enemies, also super important. Rings in general, uh, crit strike chance, crit damage. There is lightning, uh, there is a separate element like lightning crit damage, which generally has a slightly higher number than base crit strike damage. Lean towards the lightning one if you have the option to. In terms of re-rolling, you'll generally have higher crit damage that way. Um, but yeah, generally a nice ring, like for health or hardcore. If you wanted to pay normal, you might want to swap out the life or some more damage potentially. Vulnerable damage is really, really good. From that's from our frost nova, crit strike chance and damage. Um, once again, crit strike chance um, and damage. Vulnerable damage, frozen enemies. It's just a solid ring overall. Um, the imprints there as well. Uh, that imprint on that ring isn't like crazy good. Crit strike chance against injured enemies is like whatever. Uh, while you're healthy, you gain increased crowd control duration. It's okay. Uh, it does mean in that case, like for 40 seconds on my 40% uh, on my frost nova, means that they're crowd controlled for around about uh, math 1.6 seconds. Um, sorry, no, I'm lying. Uh, for around you for three seconds, so three seconds, 40% of three seconds is 1.2. So they get frozen from three seconds to 4.2, which is quite nice. It's just an extra little perk. You could probably run something else, honestly, if you wanted to. It's not mandatory that at all. Um, but this one is more mandatory. You deal uh, more damage to vulnerable enemies while you have a barrier. You're pretty much always going to have a barrier up. So you're basic and vulnerable enemies, especially on elites. So you're going to be doing basically 16% more damage in my case to elites. Now it's mandatory again that you're on one hand and offhand, mainly because offhand, well one hand and offhand gives you more attack speed. Staffs have a one attack per second rate. Uh, ones have ones or daggers have uh, one. I think both think dagger also has 1.2, but they're faster. Basically, is the point, and you want more attacks per second. Uh, most important things on weapons are, well, once again, the imprints here are pretty mandatory. I'll just talk about those quickly first. The basic skill attack speed, really important. The reason why you run a focus offhand is because of the cooldown reduction. Uh, you can only get cooldown reduction here. You, well, basically, you need a focus with cooldown reduction. Uh, you can see this one is giving me 23.8% total cooldown reduction, which is like, um, you want that. Uh, but generally, anything to do with basic skill. So here we've got nice like 41% basic skill damage. Crowd, da damage to crowd control enemies is fantastic. Damage to stun enemies is fantastic. Vulnerable damage, fantastic. Damage, damage, damage. Offhand here. Um, the cooldown reduction, as I said, is the most important thing by far. Basic skill attack speed is really, really nice. The basic damage is also really, really nice. Barrier generation is like, okay. It's like nearly perfect, but like this item is pretty amazing anyway. So so I'll let that off with the barrier generation. If you don't know what barrier generation is, um, I believe it means that uh, when I pop, up, when I, my barrier goes up, I'll have like 11.3% bigger barrier, basically. Um, in terms of gems, you have two options here, really. You can go crit strike damage versus vulnerable enemies, which I'm leaning more towards because generally the elites that I'm fighting on bosses are going to be vulnerable for the majority of the time. So that means I'm going to be doing 24% uh, crit strike damage to vulnerable enemies. Otherwise, you can run kind of like the um, the sapphires, 
because that has general crit chance, uh, crit strike damage to crowd control enemies, which is a bit more general. Um, once again, we are doing a lot of crowd control with stuns and things like that. Um, but because you are also doing so much crowd control at the same time, uh, mobs become unstoppable. And actually, I think there's an armor piece as well, which basically means that if the enemy is unstoppable, you do more damage. That is something I probably would run in normal, just if you wanted um, like a, a side tip there for normal. That's quite a good um, armor piece. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to showcase the build. Um, I'll very, very briefly actually show you my Paragon board. I'm not really going to go through it. I don't even know if it's optimized or not properly. Um, but the general gist is here, I've got like uh, control here to give me uh, more crowd control um, damage to crowd control units. And also I deal more damage to standard frozen units. Um, also here I've got another glyph where it's like... I do 10% more damage after doing using a defensive skill, but these glyphs and this stuff here, it is not that difficult to run through, but that's basically what I'm running through right now. I've got, um, does it even say what these boards are? Uh, I've got, what is it? Enchantment Master attached to, not even using any of these legendary uh, nodes, by the way, uh, Static Surge attaching to a frigid fate just because i want this vulnerability damage uh, and stuff so trying to go for this damage reduction from vulnerable enemies and we're probably going to go up into vulnerable damage into uh more damage reduction from vulnerable enemies and stuff so that's kind of like the the way i'm, I'm kind of pathing right now on the paragon board so i'll go and show you some is there a health tide there is a health tide 20 minutes let's go showcase a health tide um yeah, I think the, the, the clear is pretty insane. Um, as I said, I haven't... Did I say? I, don't, I haven't looked at anyone else's build uh, when doing this. It's just that people have been asking me what I've been doing. Um, I, yeah, hopefully you enjoy. I'll do like, I don't know, five to ten minutes of clearing out. Maybe we'll do a couple of events if there are events going up. And uh, fingers crossed I don't die. Uh, while showcasing the build, that would be kind of sad. Um, we'll pop a potion here too. Um... Just because I need, I wouldn't normally do this, but I usually normally use a potion. It's just that I want you to know what the world kind of damage of the build is, but I can't risk not taking a potion in case it's the difference between me randomly being alive or not. So we'll do something like a crit, 2% crit chance, 15% crit strike damage. So a little bit of extra damage. Okay, so let's just go out. But it just is, we're going to want to be in their face as much as possible. And we're going to be really, really, really aggressive. So teleport in, frost over. And you can kind of see, I didn't even get to use a basic attack there. Um, I need a more condensed pack than this. Let me see if I can find a bigger pack. So once the pack gets bigger, you want to use your number two. Okay, so there's some mobs here. When you're feeling like you might be in a little bit of an iffy situation, that's when you want to then pop your... Um, your flame shield. There's an event around here. But you can see the mobility is pretty good. Oh, I hate this event. Oh no, it's not the, the event. It's not the standing in pause. It, oh, it is. This is like literally the one of the worst cases, the worst events to showcase the build. Because uh, a lot of the mobs attack you at a range here. But all these mobs here are kind of like two levels above me, I think. Roughly that. And I've been clearing out 27-ish um, dungeons with my what I've got right now. So it's going pretty well. You can see the damage here is quite insane. Like that was just basically a teleport on a left click. Teleport doing a lot of damage, which is... Kind of a weird thing to say, we'll pop our ultimate here. And you can see how just by holding left click, 
it just spawns stuff. And if you're not attacking anything, if you just left click, it does spawn the extra lightning abilities out there with the ultimate. Have to kill those mobs with their little arrow above because they're a damage um, reduction aura. I hate these with banshees and wraiths and stuff. Let me just get rid of those real quick. Let's see, I didn't left click there at all. That was just a teleport and it killed the trash. Just shows you how strong the, the chest piece is and the. Uh, once again, just the teleport on the spot. Okay, let's try and find some bigger packs. Maybe we can find a, um, an elite or something to kill. But usually, like, I just I just play like kind of normally a little bit. I just usually you know space bar to dash to move a little bit faster with these boots. Just teleport the pack, pop some buttons, kill stuff. They were kind of slipping away from you there, so... Freeze them in place. There's a shrine nearby. What is it? Artillery? I love artillery. Probably not the best thing to use while showcasing up a build, but... You can kind of see how nutty it is with the attack speed and how fast the, uh, the projectiles come off. It's a lot of fun. Also, with the shine buff increased duration from the boots as well. Okay, we're not going to kill that. That is a raid boss kind of thing that drops basically no loot. I'm not going to spend 10 minutes trying to kill that. Um, another shrine. We won't bother picking up any more shrines. The artillery shrine's worn off. But you can see it's pretty comfortable to play it's not really that much of a death risk plus we've got like the the fatal blow uh covering us as well there's another event nearby try and hopefully this event really showcases the build otherwise we'll pop in into a dungeon and uh, i'll show you how it kind of clears out okay this might be quite a good event Pop the ultimate now just to clear out some of these uh, elites here. You can see we're just kind of clearing stuff out relatively easily. But it's pretty fun. As soon as I got this, this build kind of nailed down, I've had a lot of fun with it. And it's particularly nice when you get to actually hit mobs that don't die in a few hits because you get to bash your stuns on them. Attacking stun units for a longer period of time and it resets your cooldowns pretty quickly. Exploding there, so I got a little bit concerned. So I just popped my flame shield just to make sure that, that there's no silly business. But if you actually kill these exploders when they're frozen, they don't actually explode. Just a little tip if you want to clear a bunch out. A couple of nice thingies there. What box is this? A jewelry box. What we'll do is we'll do enough to get open that jewelry box and then I'll take you guys in a dungeon. I think we can showcase how crazy this build actually is in a in a in a dungeon. There's a popular dungeon that people are running right now which has very high mob density and we can clear it in about six minutes. I think that might be a better showcase. So just keep teleporting onto mobs. Just hitting stuff really at honestly at this point. Right, let's go for that protection one. This is a decent pack, but you can see it doesn't last very long. 
and then off to we are to the next one. Teleport sucks them all in and we'll just go around. Oh, hand guards. I hope we get some nice gloves. I really need some new gloves. Two sacred gloves. Not ancestral, which is the highest tier, but um, yeah, let's go to. I believe it's called the Champion's Demise. I've ran it a few times on stream today and the mob density was just the most craziest thing. I did it on a when the mobs were level 80 and I decided to do it again in a normal and then they were at my level and it was just kind of crazy. I'm just trying to remember exactly where the dungeon was. This one I've already done so I'm going to have a little box next to its name. One moment while I try and find the dungeon. Where are you? I think I've got a champion's demise. Do we just pop a key? No, I don't want to risk dying, not like this. Let's try to remember. Let me quickly Google where the champion's demise is and we'll do that. So it's in the dry steps, apparently. Uh, it is in the dry steps, which is what that's what Act Two. Oh, so it's actually up here somewhere. Oh, it's Nikovishad, so it'd be around about here. I can't find it. I can't find it. So that one there? Oh, it's right there. It was red, that's why I couldn't find it. Okay, well, at least I get five tree favors for doing this one. But this is where the build's gonna be like showcasing the clear potential, survivability potential, touch wood. <laughs> uh, I will be popping a goat's damage potion for this one um, and I'll pop it just before we start just so you can see how quickly we roughly clear the uh, the dungeon so the way to reset dungeons if you are doing if you want to do what most people are doing right now in terms of XP climbing is you just wait outside the dungeon for one minute and then you go back inside, or there's a, a so-called trick that some people do in terms of being in a group where the group leader leaves or something like that. Right, let's get into this dungeon. So the XP here is pretty insane, just because of the mob density, but um, I could imagine it being scary for some people to go into just because of how many mobs there are. So we're going to pop the potion as soon as we go in here, and uh, we'll see how quickly we clear this out. So goat's potion, so we do 20% more damage to goatmen. This whole place is basically just goatmen. There are three wings that we need to bring uh, stone pedestals into. There we go. We kind of see how quickly things are being cleared here. That wasn't my own crown bun, but 
I need to wake up a little bit. Just for the sake of hardcore and the fact that this is a... Uh, can be potentially a little bit of a dangerous dun dungeon to do. We'll, we'll be taking shrines. see how quick we're kind of able to clear this. Let's have a big pack coming up here. Blast Shrine has now worn off. Let's pop my flame shield after we kill some of those mobs just to reduce some of those explosions. Ancestral Boots. That's one wing done. It's another shrine. I've got a conduit. because of the extra 10% shrine duration that's impacting that but if we killed that without the shrine you saw how fast that elite died <laughs> it lasted like half a second all right pop an ulti here probably don't need to there's no elites here we've still got our ulti active So if things don't die instantly, it's primarily because of that damage resist aura that some of those mobs have. You need to make sure you kill those as quickly as possible. Pop our ultimate, big pack here. They need to kill everything. Oh, Butcher's here? Okay. Alright, I guess we're doing Butcher. And there's loads of packs nearby. So we'll have to try and kill the, uh, the packs. Make sure they're out of the way as much as possible. Coming up cooldown in a second. Just uh, also add every time we teleport, we're getting damage reduction as well. So that's another reason to do that, not only just to build up the stagger bar as well. Classic Butcher being in the video. But you can see how we're not really taking a massive amount. He's trying to run away from me. He's scared of me. Not sure. Nothing to be worried about, dude. Ooh, the ancestral pants. I'll have a look at those later. It's actually the first time I've had anything seemingly decent from the butcher, actually. But yeah, if that doesn't show you how good the build potentially is, then I don't know what will. <laughs> Able to kill Butcher with a bunch of mobs nearby like that. Didn't feel like it took overly too long either. I need time to prepare that. Um, let's go back this way around. Scroll of escape, I'll take one of those. So if you didn't know, you can actually put scroll of escape on your remote wheel. So, like, I've got 28 there. 
You can also pick with other consumables there too if you wish. Pop on my ulti here. This is basically how you can get out of jail for kind of for free. Scrolls are pretty rare though, but if you ask me they probably shouldn't be in hardcore, but they are. I think there's also an elixir that can get you out of jail as well, where you can not die for two seconds, quite similar to the flame shields. Pop that on. It's two elites here we need to kill. And then we just go for the boss. And boss. See how long you can count this boss stays life for. Pop our ultimate. Vulnerability debuff is on. Flame shield. So about four seconds. And that's that. Uh, I'll show you the, the legs because I'm probably sure that you're curious, <laughs> as I am. Um, oh, it's these legs. These are some weird legs. I'm not sure about them personally. Uh, where you can like get more barrier if you heal up more and stuff. I don't know. It's a bit. It's a bit of a weird one, but um, I'll look at that properly another time. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the build view look at uh, overview. I mean, that's just kind of how it plays out. Um, it's um, pretty easy once you got the items, but the hardest bit of is obviously getting the items. But a lot of it is just using your cooldowns um, relatively often, and you're going to get lots of barrier. You're going to get lots of crowd control, mobility, survivability, since flame shield makes you immune to all damage. So, yeah. And we cleared that in around about. I think that being considering as a butcher, I think that took seven minutes to clear. So, yeah, under so I took about five minutes really to clear the whole dungeon, um, which is I think this this dungeon is the most dense in terms of elites and things like that. So that was probably a better showcase than the Hell Tide. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you want more kind of Diablo Four content, let me know and I'll try and see what I can do to provide. Um, sorry about like the I only did, like doing these videos in one take, um, but yeah, sorry about the little gap up. That time stamps down so that people can um yeah <laughs> follow the video a little bit better anyway all the best take care and uh maybe i'll see you on stream at twitch.tv slash yeah maybe all right bye